What's your particular fascination and interest with Amazing Grace? Lots of things, really. Um, so I'm interested in hymnody of the 18th century and the relationships that, that were going on between Methodists, who that's, that's who I've studied a lot, and Anglicans like, like Newton in the evangelical tradition within the Church of England, and, and what kind of relationships and, and sort of conversations that were going in both directions and how that affected worship and particularly the, the practice of congregational singing. So there's, there's that aspect, but also for me, um, as a church musician, but obviously as a scholar of church music too, the way in which Amazing Grace has been reversioned in, in so many different ways uh, for churches around the world uh, and in different styles of worship is, is fascinating. What is it about that hymn that, that draws so many different musicians to it? Thank you. And, and you talk about reversioning. Well, why do you think it's been reversioned so many times? All these. I think it's, it's unusual as a hymn because um, since it's been paired with the New Britain tune, it's in some ways behaves more like a, a recorded song um, and everybody then does their version of it. Um, so I think there's a lot we can learn from um, the kind of rock music tradition of, of covers that, that seems to resonate with this. And, and actually so many secular artists have recorded it too. Um, and it, it is something that I think lends a certain sort of authenticity. There are those aspects that so many people know of Newton's biography, um, the sort of invitation and, and the message of salvation in it, I think, resounds and it's it feels like singing Amazing Grace is one of those things that Christians do um, and therefore each generation seems to, to want to respect that and, and use that in their own context and their own musical style. And do you have a particular favourite version? Oh, that's a really tough question. Um, I'm not sure I, I have a particular version of it. I think um, there are there are particular uh, recordings um, of instances that have happened on particular occasions that, that, that sit with me. Barack Obama's most famously, you know, that, that moment of him as, as president, but also preacher and orator, um, and the, that sense of, of communicating through that hymn and, and pulling people together is, is one that sticks with me and, and was very much in my mind. Um, in thinking about the, the anniversary and how that might be marked. Fantastic. And um, do you have any particular personal connection with Amazing Grace at all? Or? Uh, not particularly. I mean, it's a hymn I've sung and, and played as, a, as an organist lots of times, and, and in doing that, I've always been interested that, that really no, no two hymn books print the, the tune or the, the arrangement of the tune in quite the same way. Um, and I think that speaks to something of its history. It's, it, it's so widely used, but but seemingly endlessly adaptable musically at least um, you know and that, that's been something else that, that I found fascinating about it too. Fantastic.